All right. So bear with me here. My name is Olivia Hereford. I am um, uh, the currently the, the project lead for the Regional Virtual Production Academy. Uh, really exciting uh, program that we're getting started here. And um, one of the, 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 the first things that I want to do for maybe those of you that are not familiar with uh, virtual production, what is it? Okay. Well, it's, it's virtual production is a filmmaking and video production format that combines physical and digital elements uh, for uh, creative and realistic environments for filming. And it is an integration of real world sets, actors, props, and computer generated imagery and other, um, other technologies in real time. Um, we're really excited about this program because there is a demand for this talent. Um, and you know, their projections that we did just last summer uh, says that there's a gap of over 900. You know, we don't, we, we, we're not preparing our students for these jobs and we've got a gap, 935 students in, this, in the Bay Area that, you know, if they had, had the program and the skills and talents this could pursue these jobs. So that's why we're really excited about it. And so what we're gonna do today, um, our agenda, is that I wanna to introduce to you uh, one of our industry, our advisory members, John Scheich. And then uh, after John gets you excited about um, this industry and virtual production, I will uh, then walk through some slides to uh, tell you a little bit about the Academy and the nature of it being a collaborative program and how you can enroll. And then for the remainder of the time, uh, we'll, you know, um, answer any questions that you may have. So during the uh, our presentation today, if you would just all make sure that you're muted. If you have any questions that come up during um, the session, please put them in chat. And then once we've gone through all of the uh, information we wanna share, we'll go to the chat and see who has questions and open it up for any of you to, to ask additional questions. So with that, I would like to introduce uh, John Scheich. Uh, John is Director for Educators and um, Education Institutions at the Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers. And John is also an account manager at Advanced Systems Group that um, uh, you know, provides a lot of the onset, te onset technology used in virtual productions. So with that, John, I will stop sharing and allow you to um, um, tell us more about Simpty and, and what you do. Can you can you turn the share screen thing on so that multiple people can share so I can share my my deck? Oh, OK, so let me see here. What do I have to do here? Uh, there we go. All right, so I always do this. Can you see a screen that shows my name on it? Does that work? Uh, I'm seeing my screen that had your name on it. Let me see. I'm going to stop share and make sure that you can think. There you go. Okay. All right. So hopefully it's it, it, there's a screen now that says uh, my name and it's got the ASG logo. Is that right? That's what I'm seeing. Okay, great. Then I'm going to move forward then. So... Uh, what I, what I wanted to do today was on behalf of the RIS, which is the Rapid Implementation Solutions Group at SIMPTI, uh, and I have some slides from Ryan Hendricks, and I'll bring his name up at the end again. Uh, and uh, basically what I'm looking to do is talk a little bit about SIMPTI first, which is the Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers. But I think we tend to use the, the acronym SIMPTI more and more uh, because uh, it's more than just TV people and movie people. Uh, it's corporate video production. Um, it's all kinds of media and entertainment people that are involved in creating the standards, in creating the education, uh, and being the sort of the community to that helps make video work and also to define what video, audio, what television, what streaming, and these other technologies are for now and in the future as well. Uh, and we started over a hundred years ago in, in celluloid film, uh, but today uh, everything is pretty much digital. 
And so SIMTI is helping to drive the standards uh, for exactly, exactly that. So uh, I'm hoping this video will play and you'll hear it. I'm SIMTI. I'm SIMTI. I am SIMTI. I am SIMTI. I am SIMTI. I'm David Grindle, the executive director at the Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers. For more than 100 years, SIMTI has been a leader in the media technology industry. And we want you to join us for the next century of innovation. Today, SIMTI has over 800 standards that make media workflows more efficient and produce higher quality content. And now, all of these standards are available as part of your SIMTI membership. But it doesn't stop there. Newer SIMTI standards include groundbreaking ST2110, the future of IP transport for video, audio, and data. And for virtual productions, SIMTI has Rapid Industry Solutions, or RIS. These are areas, along with AI and microservices, where SIMTI will continue to be the media technology leader, benefiting all of our members. SIMTI also provides the media technology industry with continuing education opportunities. Our members get access to these courses, including reduced price on instructor-led courses and self-study courses that are a part of your membership. At our core, SIMTI is a global community and members get access to the benefits of that community, including events, marketing opportunities, and our premier publication, the Motion Imaging Journal. We are SIMTI and we want you to be SIMTI too. So I, I hope you're all, we're all able to see that and hear that. Yes. So what SIMTI is, is it, among other things, it's a standards body and we have developed color bars, uh, time code, uh, film leader, at the beginning of the movies and media file formats like IMF. What's IMF? The interoperable media format. Well, it, that's actually the file package that Netflix uses for the production of, of all of their materials. So it's very important in the industry as we move into more and more streaming media uh, and online and over the top television. So we, we talk, especially for our students community and new members about what the perks are. And uh, perks is just a stand for what are people, our community that we work with, which is inclusive of people who are interested in the media and entertainment industry and people who are at the very heart of the industry. And uh, one thing SIMTI does for students is it gives them the opportunity to network with professionals. It's an opportunity to elevate one's career. It's an opportunity to get recognition for work. And for uh, for example, SIMTI fellows represent people who are really at the very pinnacle of the industry, major directors and engineers in our industry, and then knowledge. And so SIMTI is certainly valuable for uh, as an addition to the kind of education that one can get into school to know more about what the real world is in terms of our media industry. Uh, and one nice value that SIMTI offers is that for the first year, students are free and subsequent years are $15. There's no credit card or anything like that required in order to have a student join for free for a year. Uh, the only requirement is that they'll need to show their student ID. To make this easy, on the SIMTI website, if one goes to the homepage, SIMTI.org, uh, right on the front page, you'll see that there's a not a member yet section, and you just fill that out. You check student or whatever the appropriate box is, and uh, the, uh, the staff at SIMTI will be in touch and will help go through the entire process. And for professional members, there's now an opportunity to join on a monthly basis. So you can find different ways to join according to one's needs. So SIMTI is kind of known for being a bit slow because standards take time to develop and gestate. 
So in order to be able to produce solutions quicker, they developed this group called RIS, which is the Rapid Implementation Solutions. And it covers several areas, but with regard to onset virtual productions, OSVP, in particular, what this is, is it's intended as a neutral, non-commercial platform to facilitate rapid implementation and rapid industry solutions with the guidance of its advisory group. And what is that industry advisory group? Well, there's over 80 companies and individual contributors, uh, some very well-known names and very well-known companies that are collectively supporting this effort and have contributed to uh, the development of the community of onset virtual production users and the companies that provide the solutions that they need. And then a further example of some of these individuals is that we have our group of professional organizations and universities, we have our financial supporters, and we have our individual contributors. And if I look at a name like Greg Chiachu, he is in fact the person uh, who is in charge of architecture at IMAX for the giant screen production. So these are people who have really dedicated their time and effort to help make this a success for the community of users needing to be able to get the best out of virtual production. So one of the key goals or tasks for RIS is to provide the ability for interchange and interoperability among different products and different solutions. So in particular, they look at the onset process with the workflow that's required. They look at what happens within the camera and having a, a source of truth or a specific solution that is a known uh, in the ecosystem for all of the different disparate elements, how they come together in the different kinds of file formats that can be used uh, for, and finally for color science. So uh, matching color from one device to another has always been a, uh, a challenge. And in terms of virtual production, it's uh, of course, extremely important. And then education. So on the SIMPTI site in the RIS section, one will find video on demand. One will find a, a glossary of terms and other resources. And an example of those other resources is the uh, map of the virtual production world or ecosystem with the different areas of creative, of the build assets, of managing the data, of the set itself that we usually think of, that's the whole thing. But there's a whole pre-production process, pre-visualization process that's required. And then finally, the deliverables that are required. And then of course, there's all of the individual contributors from the staff uh, and other people and elements. And these resources are free. You don't have to join or anything, you just go to our website. So if you do take a look at this uh, QR code, it'll take you directly to the simpty.org website, into the RIS section, into where all of the, the various uh, video on demand, glossary and other elements are. So that kind of this entire presentation. And I, I just wanna put a special note to Dr. Ryan Hendricks, who is the senior manager of this group at, at uh, SIMPTI. It's a full-time position and uh, he's very interested in being involved in groups like your own. Um, and then I'm gonna stop sharing and just thank everybody for your time. Thank you, John. And uh, I, I should point out that uh, the Regional Virtual Production Academy is uh, looking to begin a relationship with the uh, RIS uh, group as a part of that advisory. We're pretty excited about it. And you know, I would highly recommend that uh, uh, if you're if you're a student that you join as a SIMPTI student. Uh, I've been to a couple of the local meetings and they have been just absolutely amazing and informative. Uh, in fact, you know, there's a one coming up next week that I'm really looking forward to. Um, 
So anyway, uh, I, I highly recommend that you uh, take John's um, advice and, and, and sign up as, as, as a student member. Uh, I, I think you'll find it very, uh, very interesting or what, what you'll learn. So, all right, so I'm now, uh, again, thank you so much, John, and it, please, hopefully you stick around. I bet you'll have some questions. I will, and thank you. Okay. Um, and you know more about Simpty and some of the other things, and you know a little bit more about ASG because you guys are involved in some really, in, in, you know, important activity, you know, cool stuff there. So uh, hopefully you can share some of that as well. So let me uh, share my screen again. Go back. Wait. Stop. Stop. What? Okay. Oh, wrong screen. Sorry. Let me go back here and get to the right screen. There we go. That's where I want to go. Okay. All right. So, next. So, let me tell you about the Regional Virtual Production Academy. Well, our vision statement is to provide Bay Area Community College students across the region with an accelerated path to credentials and jobs in virtual production while modeling the intent and purpose of the collaborative program. And uh, just a little bit of, of the, just a little bit of background on what a collaborative program is. You know, first of all, our, our academy got started when uh, a couple of our the faculty that are involved right now started getting in, involved in virtual production and pre preparing students for, for virtual production and said, hey, you know, we should really, this is something we really need to uh, turn into a program because there's, it's exciting and there's opportunities out there. But the challenge that we had in pulling together a program at the time, a year and a half ago, um, there was not a single college that had all of the courses required to prepare you for jobs in virtual production. So six colleges came together and said, hey, let's, you know, let's do a collaborative where students can take, take the courses at, at any of the six colleges. And in turn, what that means is that it accelerates, you know, your uh, ability to finish up a, a certificate of achievement in a year, in two semesters as opposed to having to wait until your college may be offered a course that you need or getting started with a course that maybe not is not at your particular college. So that is what a collaborative is all about. It allows you to take courses at multiple colleges as they come available so that you can complete the program quickly. And so here's the list of the, the, the colleges that are participating. Uh, we have, you know, Berkeley City College, Diablo Valley, Laney College, uh, Mission College, Ohlone, and Santa Rosa. Um, so again, it's, we're covering the, the whole region. And so it's really pretty exciting. And, and the cool thing about us, the reason the colleges are, are uh, excited about it, is that it also increases our enrollment because we can fill classes. So it's a win-win for both the both students and uh, the colleges. This is the, the program flow chart, okay? There are uh, two certificates of achievement currently approved and uh, being offered. We're starting to offer the courses for the certificate of achievement in virtual production fundamentals. And then uh, stacked on that, if you decide to go further, is a certificate of achievement in advanced virtual production. And it has three specializations, animation, modeling and film production. We are currently in the process of, of developing an associate's degree. So you've got a, you, you, you've, it's a really great pathway. You can start with the fundamentals, work your way up to advanced. We're also looking at a, a, a new program called the VP Professionals, which may be kind of a shortened, uh, accelerated uh, version of one of the advanced certificates. But anyway, here's what you can do today virtual production fundamentals. And uh, starting next year, we'll, we'll be able to get started on the advanced um, virtual production certificate. So one of the ways that uh, we really get the, we really want you to check out and go and 
go to right away with maybe after after you've attended here is that we would like to really bring your attention to our website. And this is where a lot of the information that, you know, I'm kind of briefly uh, sharing with you today, you can get the details about. And um, the, it's the, I see, I should probably, maybe I don't have, I, I what be, once I finish this, this, um, this going through this slide deck, I will put the link to this um, student page of our website in chat. But let me go through it now to, to, to share with you, uh, you know, some really important parts of, of, of this website. First of all, I want to say that if you are interested, if, if what you hear today, and uh, um, you find out that you wanna get more information, this is where you would go to uh, fill in your contact information. And um, one of one of the uh, faculty leads or one of our coordinators will get in contact with you to follow up on uh, your interests. So that's the first thing. And then when you go to the site, you can also get information more about the actual courses that are, uh, that are currently available. Uh, and the, in this particular, these are the courses that are, are these are the, the, the one, two, three, four, these six courses here are the core courses uh, for the VP Fundamentals Certificate. And then you choose one of these electives. Um, and then let's see, I think we have a calendar here. So you can pick your options here. In other words, you're saying, okay, I want to put together a plan as to when I'm going to take the courses. You can actually go here and find out where the courses are actually being taught. So the, the our website, our student website provides a lot of this information for you as far as planning and, and uh, getting, getting started on pursuing. Let's get back here. And then there, I, there is another link that I'd like to show you that actually shows the schedule. So let's say, for instance, if you're looking at for a course at Berkeley City College, you can take a look and say, oh, okay, I, I need 3D animation and I see that it's being offered in spring of 24. Again, we'll, this is, we'll, we'll have a fall pretty soon. Well, I think we may have some, let me see. Yes, we do, all right, hey. That's an update. <laughs> anyway, so if you're looking to to what courses may be available at your college, uh, let's say you go to Berkeley City and you want to get started, you can come here and see what the question see see when the classes are being offered. And um, usually, what we have here, we like I said, this is an update. We're we're starting to get our fall schedule uh, in place. This will actually, in addition, have the days and the time, as well as letting you know that it's online synchronous. So anyway, check out the site, please. Um, it is a very lots of detail and information there about uh, the schedule. All right. So, so what are the benefits? Well, collaborative learning again. Uh, when you have six colleges, you have so much more opportunities to uh, uh, get access to courses. Uh, by the way, uh, most of the courses in a collaborative program, or in fact, the majority is kind of almost a requirement, uh, are offered on, have to have an online modality. So that's another um, benefit that you, the, the, for accessibility uh, to the program. Um, the way it works is, is there is a term called a home college. And that is the college, if you're already a student at one of these six colleges, then you're, and again, I keep using the Berkeley example, if you already a student at Berkeley and you wanna to begin to take some of these courses, Berkeley is your home college. Then if you see a course that may be being taught at Laney or DVC and it fits your schedule, you can then go online and uh, these courses that are at the other colleges are uh, accessible via the California Virtual Campus, the CVC, because that is where the online version of, of many of the courses being taught at our colleges are being offered. So you would just go to the go to that, go to the CVC, 
you would apply and then say that you want to take this course that's being taught online um, at DBC and you know sign up. And DBC, being a part of the exchange, will let your home college know that you are taking a course at their college. And it all shows up in your student information that you are taking, taking courses at other colleges. Okay. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, we have, I, I tell you, the, the faculty members this, of, of, the, of this, the faculty leads at each of the colleges are just have just been incredible to work with. They're all passionate about this industry and these opportunities. They have incredible connections to industry. And uh, I, really, uh, I, it's, it's been a great group to work with. And they're, they're very, very supportive in uh, wanting to see you all be, all be successful. And again, they, inter they introduce us and get us involved with people like John. John works with them to, to uh, for, in it, for instance, schedule visits to um, uh, set locations and things like that. So again, it's, this is an incredible group of a, a team of people uh, supporting the academy. Um, you'll be able to develop real world skills because of this, all of this, you know, practical, practical skills through four credit courses. Uh, and it's basically, we have designed this program with industry input. We did, we, we, we did not even begin to, to de define or develop this program until after we created a, a very stellar uh, industry advisory. Uh, they, and they have provided us with incredible uh, input and, and support uh, in, for the program. And they continue to do so. Um, Prerequisite and then admission requirements. You know, most of the most of our courses, the, the prerequisites are actually recommendations, uh, but we still, you know, may want to make sure that they align with the the prerequisites that are are set by the the the, the course pathways in the program. Um, and then uh, for admission, you know, a perfect prospective students should follow just the, the, gen, the, the normal admission requirements for, at your home college. But when you do that, if you decide that you are going to pursue uh, one of the RVPA um, uh, certificates, you should, you, you should declare that that is the certificate or, or degree that you will be pursuing when we get to that point. Um, your admission requirements, again, because we're six colleges here and co there's always some slight differences in how colleges, you know, uh, uh, do, do, you know, uh, uh, handle their processes is that they may vary. Okay. So it's, it's important that uh, you refer to your college admissions guideline and uh, just, but just make sure you express your intent to be a part of this collaborative program. So what's the flow in, in how to enroll? Well, first things, something like this. We're gonna be doing these uh, info sessions once a month through the spring semester to raise your awareness of the program. Um, and uh, after you, hopefully after you've attended the session today, you'll go check out and get more details from the, um, from the uh, student webpage. I'll get that link in 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 there as soon as uh, I I've gone finished going through this through the deck here, um, and then you'll complete that form that I showed you, and then then the part of one of one of the members of our team it might be one of the lead faculty it might be part one of the of uh, the group that I work with uh, from the uh, with the region will contact you. Um, and uh, we will we are in the process right now of identifying a. Uh, uh, a, a person, a position that will be the RVPA support specialist. Uh, we expect that that person will be on board this summer. Uh, but in the meantime, lead faculty and our group are, are covering for that. Okay. There'll be some forms that you'll have to uh, uh, submit. Uh, because we are sharing information between colleges, you'll have to do a FERPA waiver to, you know, to say it's okay for one college to share, you know, your information about courses you've taken there to with another college uh, that where you're also taking courses. And then obviously there's the normal, these, if you're already a student, you probably have filled some of these forms out. You know that we have to confirm residency. 
you know, we have you have to fill out, you know, forms for financial aid, et cetera. That that hasn't changed, you know, that doesn't change in this process, but all we're all we're making sure is that you're aware that we're sharing your information across the colleges. So then, you know, you your home college has made the connection. They know that you're declaring that you uh, are pursuing uh, this program. And um, and then once you've done that, you go through the whole process of the financial aid if you haven't done that already. Um, and then you'll in, you'll you'll then start taking courses if you haven't already. Um, at your home college. And by the way, I, I should mention that um, some of these courses, what we, in working with our team here of, of, the, of the lead faculty, we know that um, there, are, there are quite a few of our students in, in, in related programs that have already taken several of the courses required for the fundamentals. So uh, if that's the case, then uh, when you're, you're enrolling and um, you know, declaring uh, at your home college, that uh, you take a look uh, at the information on the student webpage about the, the courses and the pathways, because you may already be halfway through to your fundamental certificate. So if, you, if, if a course isn't taught at your home college, then you would enroll in, 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 at the teaching college, and you can do that through the CVC. Go on to the CVC exchange. We can help you. Um, with that, if 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 need be, uh, but again, it's it's just like enrolling at a at a second at a second or you know another college, and that will automatically if they if if their systems are linked, it will be pretty seamless. Okay. When you complete the courses, um, you know basically what you do is you go back to um, uh, your home college, and you um, petition for completion. And the home college awards you your credential. So that's the flow. Um, and uh, one of the things that's you know you, again that's unique about this is that you're you're actually you know working with you know actually two colleges. You're working with your your college and access to the other colleges through the CVC exchange. If 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 a course is being taught, if a course that you need is not being taught um, via the, the uh, California virtual campus, then we have processes in place. We can work with you uh, to get you into the, the course that may be taught, for example, at one of the colleges that's not yet on the exchange. We have that, we have those processes in place and support for you uh, to make, to, to help you help you get that course completed as well. Uh, but most, most of the courses right now are available online. So um, the other thing I want to point out too, as I mentioned before, is that we work very closely with industry, um, you know, to not only to expose you to opportunities and to you know state of the art curriculum, uh, but also partnerships for our instructors uh, and to keep them current and to also engage our students in um, internship opportunities. A lot of times, in case of doing some really cool research such as uh, this one that was done uh, with at Diablo Valley College, uh, where um, a, it, they took on a, a, a proof of concept uh, project, uh, real-time XR. Um, did I see Joanne join? I don't know if Joanne is, is available, but this was a really excited, exciting uh, project um, using what I, I sometimes hear people call digital twins, but it was really, uh, the students did a, a quite a bit of the work uh, around this proof of concept, and they were able to uh, showcase uh, their work at the International Broadcasting, I don't remember what that C stands for, but it's, it's, it's an international body of, um, of uh, industry research, and they're really looking into what's called real-time technology, uh, which basically, Virtual production is is a form of that, so it's really pretty exciting. Other ex exciting stuff going on too. Um, let's see, the other thing I would like to show you here is um, and a project that was done by a, a student, Sean Mertz, at um, Berkeley City College, and uh, 
it kind of showcases the technology and projects that students get involved with using some of the um, tools, for example, things like uh, uh, Unreal Engine uh, was used uh, uh, in this video. I just want to show you that this, these are some of the projects that are af actually being, uh, oops, go back. I'm going to show you that video. Can you see my screen? Yes. Thank you. So I think it's really cool that you can uh, actually uh, create these worlds. Right here, go back to my screen here. So, ooh. All right, so what I'd like to do now is I, I'm now at the point where we're at a Q and A. Um, and uh, let me see what we have in the chat. Okay, is it someone's screenshot that I didn't catch? Okay. Um, we've got the Simti link in the chat. And thank you, Luigi, for posting the, uh, did someone, did, did, does everybody see that Louie has posted the students page to the RVPA website? We'll do it again. Okay. And we did have audio. All right. So I don't I don't see any uh, specific questions for us or John. Louie, I see you have a hand up. Yeah. Um so I'm back in school. Was it just graduated what six years ago and back to uh do filmmaking and I don't know perfect timing seeing this virtual production like process uh as a person who's back in school what should I is it this is the process the same exact thing same exact process or is there any other prerequisites I need to do or I've already done uh no I think if you have you I would say go and take a look at the course sequence that at the at the website um and um you know, take a look. I mean, I don't, I don't think that there's going, if you've already, if you're coming back, I doubt whether there, you're going to have any uh, uh, issues with 
the recommendations for the initial courses. You know, toward the end, uh, the last two or three courses uh, may have recommend that you have completed the subsequent courses, obviously. Got it. But no, I think I think I think you should be fine. And other other question, because I generally am very intrigued with getting a virtual production certification focusing on film, because I, I've discovered at least uh, last semester that my strength is in cinematography and love to see if I can do virtual cinematography. Um, so what so you said, just type down my email or put in the, my information and yeah. talk to either you or anyone else to see what the path is. Yes, because you 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 know you may have already have a lot of the you know have completed the um, some of the fundamentals courses, but it sounds like what you want to get to is the uh, film production specialization of the advanced virtual production certificate. Because there were three there were three specializations, you know, animation, model modeling, and film production. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Film production specifically. Uh, we'll be, we'll, we will begin to start offering those courses in the fall. Well, that we'll begin to start offering that certificate in the fall. Uh, we got started with fundamentals this spring. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, um, and there won't be any summer classes, just out of curiosity. Um, there may be. There may be. Um, we're in the process right now, as, as I was showing you on the website. You know, mm -hmm. we're starting to get the fall courses in. Uh, yeah. And I do recall that we were talking about some of the colleges having summer courses. Um, so just check back on the website. Perfect. So I'm trying to see if I have any other questions, but I'll definitely ask uh, before time is up. But appreciate yeah, like it. I said, you know, put your contact information in there and uh, someone will get, will get back to you. All right. Thank you. Danny? Hi, hi, yeah, I I just have a question about the um the sister schools that you were talking about. If we do say if we do sign up for other other schools, are we at least guaranteed like or given priority to other students who want to keep pursuing the virtual production um certificate or is it just first come first serve and good luck? You know what? It's my understanding, Danny, that uh, the 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 rules and process for priorities are not going to change because this is a collaborative program. As you know, I mean that there there are some students that get priorities for different reasons. Being part of a collaborative is is not going to give you any um, you know a priority to these courses unless you fit in one of those categories that get priority. Um, but one of the things that I think is an advantage that we, we of, of, of uh, expressing interest and declaring this pr program is that our team of lead faculty keep a close eye on enrollment, okay? Because it's very important to the scheduling. When we're seeing that there are students that are um, uh, a high enrollment in one class, uh, and like I was mentioning before, we start to see a waiting list. Um, we try to address that with scheduling, you know, scheduling more courses or making sure that a course is available at a at a, at at one of the other colleges. So uh, that helps. But the answer, no, you don't get any special priority, but you get some attention relative to as far as our scheduling and 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 it's my understanding that you, they'll reach out to you. They see you on a wait list, and there's a course that you really need. They'll uh, reach out to you and 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 make sure you're aware of the availability at another one of the colleges. Cool. That's that, that what I was wondering. And one more time, you did say that the film portion of this virtual pr production, um, cor like the courses, like like Louis was saying, like the cinematography or anything pertaining to that, that's going to start in the fall, right? Yes, yes. Cool. But I would take a right, look thanks. at oh. take a look at the course sequence because one of the things I what I didn't what I what I failed to mention is that all of these are existing courses, right? Mm. So you may have already taken some of them. Okay. Oh, okay. 
So take a look at the, uh, the, the, the program pathway and the courses in each of the certificates and check that out because you, you may, you may be already have a head start, particularly if you've been taking classes in cinematography, there may be some that you've taken. Cool. Thank you so much. Any questions for John? Um, I think I really do appreciate the presentation and the SMPTE org conference. Is that, is that associated with the RVPA, correct? Why yeah, so, uh, John, John is on our advisory and uh, he's very, very connected into, you know, uh, our, our, we have a, there's a student chapter down in the South Bay and we're really trying to get one started up here in, in the uh, Northeast Bay. Uh, and uh, anyway, John, go ahead. Yeah, so so SIPTI is, so I guess we're partnering in our own way with the Academy, uh, and we're a trade organization. So what we're looking to do is to bring uh, uh, new people, in, you know, into the industry, you know, as we sort of get gray hair, right? So as a, uh, so we want to encourage uh, students to get into programs and and to learn as much about the technology and about the operations and and so on, uh, so they can feel comfortable uh, getting into this area. Um, and so, uh, the uh, in addition to the television, in addition to the film and and some of the other elements, the television, live production, corporate production, and so on, also are taking advantage of virtual production today. So. Uh, that was mentioned earlier about IBC and, and, and it's actually, IBC is actually one of the large European broadcast television media shows uh, globally in the, in the industry today. And uh, Simti is actually uh, uh, helps to put on the IBC show. Uh, the other huge show is the NAB show, National Association of Broadcasters. And that will be in Las Vegas in mid April. And that show gets about 80,000 people that are interested in this kind of technology. Perfect. And I you know, that... I, highly, I highly recommend to, to students that uh, you join professional organizations. It's one of the best way to get exposure uh, to the technology, to the industry, making contacts, um, invaluable, invaluable. Danny, you have your hand? Yeah, for that conference in April, um, it's to, to get tickets. Where is there? Is that a part of the a, a part of the website that that you've given us, or is that something uh, completely separate? Um, uh, let me see if I the, the uh, NAB trade show. Uh, if you want to just go to the exhibit hall where all of the equipment manufacturers are, uh, you can get a free ticket for that. Uh, for other parts of the show, there, there are charges. Uh, you'll need a code. Let me see if I can find a code for you guys and I'll put it on the chat. And while you're doing that, I see Swasti has a question. Um, does the introduction fundamentals course need any prerequisite? Again, what what you what you should do is when you if you can go to the student website, when you see the list of courses, there's a link you can click on that will provide you know the the um, uh, the um, course outline, and it will let you know if there is a prerequisite or a recommendation. If you start at the very beginning of the the, the course sequence, that's where I would go first. I mean, I think maybe one of the initial courses is, um, you know, intro to animation or something like that. And it will tell you if there is a recommendation. Um, but again, as I mentioned, um, until you get to the more, the, to the end of the sequence, most of, most, most of them are recommendations. And then John- Thanks, John. Oh, uh, I had another question. You mentioned that there is another event coming next week. Will it be on uh, Wednesday, if I recall? There is a Simpty meeting, right, John? The one on the uh, 28th? 
Uh, yes, that's right. Um, we're we're currently in the waiting list for that, but uh, you definitely could sign up. I'll I'll put the registration site up for that too. Thank you, because I I feel like I have a one of my professors is Professor Bimji. Uh, she's helping us doing the virtual production class, like first ever one in Diablo Valley College, and she mentioned we're going on a field trip. Yeah, and there's also another event like after that, like I think two hours after it's at that's six o'clock. Yeah, that's okay. the one. So you're you're going to the same place as the meeting. Okay, well, shoot, It'd be awesome so to see you. Guys. Got it. <laughs> you got it. No, I mean, no, I still need to go. I got to double check if I'm registered. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I tell you, the 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 Simpty meeting is going to be has some really great speakers and things too. So if you can oh, yeah. put yourself on that wait list, I think it'd, it'd be great. If you want to see it twice. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm I'm open. I have to learn as much as I can because I knew uh, not to get all personal, but like, you know, when once COVID happened, I was quarantined and here I am building my PC. So that it's pur pur purposely uh, made for Unreal Engine. And well, here I am. Great. You know, I think we can get Louis in, so we should we should go for that. I'll, I'll <laughs> let me just find that info real quick. Appreciate it. But mind you, I'm very new. But my brother, he he uh he does rigging. Like he his major was in in uh virtual like software engineer for rigging. So I try to force him to come with me to see all this because he's so competent at this stuff too. Great. Any other questions? Yeah, so it's in the chat at the top. There's that site. Hopefully that link came through okay. It looks a little bit funky, but I think you'll figure it out. Yeah. You see that, Louie? Yeah. Very good. It worked. And the NAB code to end something is in there too for Danny. Bless your heart, sir. Any other questions? Well, thank you all for registering to events. Yeah. Well, thank you all for uh, joining this uh, first uh, uh, student and, and faculty. We've invited faculty to this uh, info session as well because we really want to get the word out about um, the academy. And um, so anyway, um, thank you for joining. This will be recorded and uh, posted on the, um, again, the RVPA site. The, we post a lot of our meetings and, the, uh, um, and, and, aver and, and we'll be notifying you of the, of the, monthly, um, of the monthly info sessions. Uh, next month, uh our rvpa info session will be combined with the uh, bay ict uh tech talk uh because we do want to get the word out uh even beyond uh the, the students at our current um um collaborative colleges we do want to get the word out now you do have to write as of right now you do have to take these courses at the six colleges but that just means that if you haven't already, you may, you can enroll in one of those six colleges if you're not already there. But I, that's another thing that I wanted to, uh, wanted to let you know. Okay. Well, thank you all for, for coming. I hope this has uh, been helpful in, in uh, bringing, making you aware of the Regional Virtual Production Academy. And uh, I hope that uh, you'll, uh, We'll take advantage of it. This is pretty exciting stuff. I think it's really cool. I'm having a, a, a really good time being involved and even with not even having that that creative creative background. It is I'm just finding it really exciting and, and hopefully you all will too. So anyway. Thank you again. And again, if you want more information, go to the website, fill out that contact page and um, we'll we'll be in touch. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your evening. You too.